overall goal of the following experiment is to estimate the proportion of stem-like cells within a cancer cell line or tumor tissue sample and assess their capacity for self-renewal over successive passages. To do this, a cancer cell line or tumor tissue is processed to generate a single cell suspension, which is then sorted to isolate CD44 positive and CD24 negative cellular subsets. The cells are seeded onto low attachment plates, allowed time for growth, and then examined by light microscopy. Sphere forming efficiency is quantified by determining the number of spheres that have formed relative to the number of cells originally seeded. The process of generating a single cell suspension, allowing time for growth, and determining sphere forming efficiency is repeated over successive passages ultimately providing a measure of the capacity of the cells for self-renewal over time. This method provides a simple prospective assay to identify cells exhibiting functional properties of stem cells, such as self-renewal, as well as a quantitative estimate of the number of stem cells coming from in vivo tumours. A central tenet of sphere-forming assays is that each sphere is derived from a single cell, is therefore clonal. For this reason, cell density is the most important parameter of this assay because it has a critical impact on clonality. Working under a sterile culture hood, begin this procedure with MCF7 or MDA-MB231 cells that are 70 to 80% confluent. Aspirate the medium from the flask. Wash the cells twice with PBS. Then, add trypsin EDTA and incubate for two to six minutes. Following detachment, quench by adding mammosphere medium containing 10% FBS. Once the cells have detached, transfer them to a 15 milliliter conical centrifuge tube and spin at 200 times G at room temperature for five minutes. Following the centrifugation, decant the supernatant. Then, resuspend the cells in 1 to 5 milliliters of mammosphere medium. Pipette up and down 10 times to break up the cell pellet. Next, transfer the cell suspension to a 40 micron cell straining cap filter and collect the flow through in the attached tube to obtain a single cell suspension. Pipette a 20 microliter aliquot of the resuspended cells onto a hemocytometer and use a microscope to examine it. If cell clusters are observed, as seen here, use a syringe to passage the suspension in and out of a 25 gauge needle one or two times. Once the cells have been dispersed into a single cell suspension, as shown here, Proceed to isolate CD44 positive, CD24 negative cellular subsets via fluorescence activated cell sorting. For magnetic activated cell sorting, use an LS column to positively select the CD44 positive cells. Since the desired cells attach to the walls of the LS column, discard the flow through. Then, to remove cells from the column, apply 5 milliliters of buffer and apply and depress the plunger supplied with the column to flush out the desired cells. Next, use an LD column to further purify the population by negative selection. Here, the CD24 positive cells attach to the LD columns. Collect the flow through, which contains the CD24 negative cells. Next, using flow cytometry, confirm the phenotypes of all isolated cells. Using the tripan blue exclusion method, calculate the density of viable cells. After appropriately diluting the cell suspension, seed each well of a 6-well ultra-low attachment plate with 500 to 4,000 cells per centimeter square in 2 milliliters of complete mammosphere medium. Incubate the plates, taking care not to disturb them, for 5 to 10 days until spheres are observed. Continue culturing until the spheres are at least 40 microns in diameter, but have not yet started to turn apoptotic. Obtain human breast cancer tissue from patients undergoing surgery for the removal of breast tumors. 
Store the tissue on ice for up to 24 hours in 50 milliliter sterile tubes in DMEM containing 100 units per milliliter penicillin and 100 units per milliliter streptomycin. Working under a sterile tissue culture hood, transfer the sample into a 100 millimeter tissue culture dish containing a small volume of medium. Using sterile scissors, a scalpel and tweezers, remove the adipose tissue. Add 2 to 3 milliliters of DMEM F12 and using a sterile scalpel or razor blade, mince the sample until no large pieces remain. Resuspend the tissue pieces in 10 milliliters of pre-warmed DMEM containing proteolytic enzymes and incubate at 37 degrees Celsius in a rotary shaker for 1 to 3 hours. When extracting viable primate tumor cells using digestive enzymes, there is a critical trade-off between cell death and sufficient extraction to the cellular matrix. To ensure success, it's essential to regularly monitor this digestion. Every half an hour, pipette 20 microliters of suspension onto a hemocytometer and use a microscope to assess the degree of digestion. Once the digestion is complete, allow the fragments to sediment for five minutes. Then, transfer the supernatant to a 15 milliliter conical polypropylene tube. Centrifuge at 200 times G for 10 minutes at room temperature. After the spin, carefully decant the supernatant and resuspend the cells in 1 to 5 milliliters of mammosphere medium. Then, prepare and plate single cell suspensions as described in the previous section of this video. Pass the cells up and down through a 25 gauge syringe at a maximum of two times to disperse the cells if necessary. After the culture period, observe the cells at 40 times magnification under a microscope equipped with a digital camera. Acquire images of five random fields. Once all of the images have been taken, Use the acquisition software to determine the number of mammospheres that are larger than 40 microns in diameter. Finally, calculate the mammosphere forming efficiency by dividing the number of mammospheres in each well by the number of cells seeded in each well times 100. I put the medium containing the mammospheres from each well into a 15 milliliter tube. Wash each well with PBS and add it to the collected medium. Then, centrifuge the cells at 115 times G for 10 minutes at room temperature. After the spin, discard the supernatant and resuspend the pellet in 500 microliters of pre-warmed trypsin EDTA. Incubate for 2 to 3 minutes. Following the incubation, Add 500 microliters of FBS to neutralize the trypsin. Then, centrifuge at 500 times G for 5 minutes. Once the spin has completed, discard the supernatant and resuspend the pellet in 100 microliters of mammosphere medium. Pipette up and down to disaggregate any spheres. Again, using a hemocytometer, count the cells and determine whether they have dispersed into a single cell suspension. If not, pass them through a 25 gauge syringe up to two times to obtain single cells. Seed the cells into a new ultra low attachment six well plate at the same density used in the primary generation. After five to 10 days, count spheres larger than 40 microns and calculate sphere forming efficiency as before. To estimate sphere-forming efficiency, mammospheres were grown from an epithelial estrogen-positive MCF7 and a mesenchymal triple-negative MDA231 cell line as described in this video. Counts of mammospheres larger than 40 microns provide an estimate of sphere-forming efficiency for each cell line. Note that the minimal cell fusion aggregation seen here was attained by low-density plating. Here, at 500 cells per centimeter square for MCF7 and 1,000 cells per centimeter square for MDA231.
After watching this video, you should have a good understanding of how to grow and count mammospheres derived from adherent cell lines or from surgical tumor samples. While attempting this procedure, it's important to remember to seed cells at low densities to ensure clonality and to ensure a high proportion of cells are viable when extracting cells from surgical samples. In addition to this procedure, other methods like xenografting cell populations into immunocompromised mice should be performed in order to determine in vivo tumorigenicity of tissues of interest. 